Hello everyone, welcome back to Combat Made Easy and I hope you all are doing very well. Before we begin, let me remind my dear students that the contents of this channel are only to supplement your knowledge, not to replace the regular online and offline classes in your institution. So please attend your classes and do not miss them. Also, if you like our contents, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, like the videos and share these videos with your friends, with your batchmates, with your juniors. Also, if you are a teacher, then with your students. Please follow our Facebook page and the link will be given in the description. In our previous videos on diarrhea, we learned that oral rehydration therapy is the mode of treatment in diarrhea with some dehydration in under 5 children and this is known as plan B. Today we shall talk about the use of zinc and ORS in episodes of diarrhea. Let us start with zinc. Multiple studies have been conducted in many developing countries like India, Bangladesh, Pakistan and African countries where the burden of diarrheal diseases is quite high. So there are a lot of morbidities and mortalities from diarrhea. And it was found that zinc supplementation significantly reduces the severity as well as the duration of the acute episodes of diarrhea in the under 5 children. It was also found that when zinc supplementation is given for about 10 days to 2 weeks, it reduces the incidence of diarrheal episodes for the next 2 to 3 months. So zinc supplementation has some protective role in the under 5 children against diarrhea. Now let us run the dosage as recommended by WHO and UNICEF. Generally any children less than 2 months, zinc is not recommended. 2 months to 6 months, 10 mg per day. Uh, that is a dose and it is given for 2 weeks or 14 days and any children above 6 months is given 20 mg per day for 2 weeks. So this is the recommended dosage for zinc. Now let us move on to ORS. So oral rehydration. So oral rehydration treatment can be safely and successfully used in treating acute diarrhea due to all etiologies in all age group and in all countries. So it is not like that ORS or better to say ORT that is oral rehydration treatment or therapy is needed for a particular bacterial infection. No, it is not like that. We can use this therapy for diarrhea of any etiology and it is also recommended for all age groups. So infants, children, even adolescents, adults, they can have the oral rehydration therapy during episodes of diarrhea. The aim of oral fluid therapy is to prevent dehydration and to reduce mortality. Oral fluid therapy is based on observation that glucose when given orally, it enhances the intestinal absorption of salt and water and it is capable of correcting the electrolyte and water deficit. So it helps in prevention of further dehydration and maybe help in rehydration. So the glucose that is present in the ORS that enhances or increases the intestinal absorption of salt and water. So salt absorption means there is correction of electrolyte and water absorption means it will prevent further dehydration. Uh, the first composition of ORS as recommended by WHO had sodium bicarbonate in it. Now uh, with further changes in the formulation, there was inclusion of trisodium citrate replacing the sodium bicarbonate and it made the product more stable and it resulted in less stool output, especially in high output diarrhea as in cholera. So use of trisodium citrate reduced uh, the stool output. So less number of stool output or uh, the person or the patient will pass less amount of stools and less frequently. Now let us look at the old formulation uh, by WHO. So we had sodium chloride, sodium bicarbonate, potassium chloride and glucose in the form of dextrose. So this is the bicarbonate based formulation and, and then sodium bicarbonate was replaced by trisodium citrate dihydrate. You can see that the amount of sodium chloride, potassium chloride and glucose remains the same but sodium bicarbonate 2.5 gram was replaced by trisodium citrate dihydrate 2.9 gram. Next comes the concept of low osmolar ORS. So this is the uh, recently approved formulation 
and it focused on reducing the osmolarity <clears throat> by reducing the concentration of glucose and sodium chloride in the solution so if you look at the uh, this formula the citrate based formula the amount of sodium chloride was 3.5 gram and glucose was 20 gram here we have sodium chloride 2.6 gram and glucose 13.5 gram so uh, from 3.5 to 2.6 gram it is reduced the sodium chloride and glucose is reduced from 20 gram to 13.5 gram let us look at the osmolarity since we are calling it low osmolar ors in the old ors solution uh, formulation uh, the osmolarity was 311 millimole per liter whereas the osmolarity of low osmolar ors is only 245 millimole per liter now the question may be why do we have to use or why it is recommended to use low osmolar ors so what are the benefits of low osmolar ors the benefits are we can avoid possible adverse effects of hypertonicity so uh, because of hyper osmolarity uh, there were lot of adverse effects of the uh, conventional formulation of ors so if we use low osmolar ors the adverse effects can be avoided also the low osmolar ors helps in 20 percent reduction in stool output 30 percent reduction in vomiting as well as 33 percent decrease in the need of unscheduled intravenous therapy so the need of plan c or intravenous therapy is reduced by 33 percent so this is also huge so these are the benefits of low osmolar ors how to prepare oral rehydration solution remember that ors stands for oral rehydration salt when the salt is dissolved in water it is called oral rehydration solution first step is to wash your hands with soap and treated water of course we need to wash our hand otherwise the water can be contaminated and there is no point giving contaminated water to a person who is already suffering from diarrhea next we have to wash the container and stirring utensil with soap and treated water so the utensil in which we are going to prepare the ORS should also be thoroughly cleaned. Next we put 1 liter of treated water which actually means the drinkable water in the clean container put ORS powder in the water and then thoroughly mix it. <coughs> the water that we should use while preparing the ORS should be at room temperature. It should not be very hot. After preparing the ORS we must uh, transfer the ORS into a clean capped bottle. The ORS should be made fresh daily and used within 24 hours. So after preparing ORS, if 24 hours have elapsed and still there is some amount of ORS remaining, it should not be given to any person. It should be discarded and if needed, another fresh batch of ORS to be prepared. And it should not be boiled or otherwise sterilized. So once prepared, the ORS needs not to be boiled or sterilized. It can be taken as it is. What if there is no ORS powder available? So let us imagine a situation. There is an under five child suffering from acute episodes of diarrhea. The child is passing water stool frequently. There is no ORS present at home. There is no nearby medicine shop or pharmacy. Also, there is no health center close to the house where the mother can take her child. So in such situation, what she can do is she has to take one liter of clean drinking water, then add one level teaspoon of common salt or uh, table salt that is sodium chloride and six level teaspoon of sugar she should mix them thoroughly and this can be used for the time being so remember this is not a replacement of oral rehydration salt or solution ORS but she can use it until she gets her hands on the ORS powder next question is how much ORS is to be used for any child less than two years we have to give one teaspoon every one to two minutes and offer frequent sips out of a cup for older children adults can drink as much as they like so remember for any child less than two years it has to be given a teaspoon of oral rehydration solution every one to two minutes for older children they are given frequent sips out of a cup and adults can take as much as they like 
now this is the recommended amount or estimated recommended amount based on body weight or age so if the age of the child is known we can give uh, this amount of ORS in ml if the body weight is known we can also get it but remember if the mother cannot specify the age of the child correctly we can take the body weight of the child and multiply it with 75 so 75 ml per kg is the amount an approximate amount that is to be given in the first four hours so this is easier to remember so for the first four hours the amount of what is to be given is 75 ml per kg body weight so this is for first four hours as a general guide after each loose tool give 50 to 100 ml to children less than two years of age 100 to 200 ml in children two years to 10 years of age group and for older children and adult you have to give them as much fluid as they can take if the child vomits sometimes what happens during oral rehydration therapy the child may vomit so we have to wait about 10 minutes and then we have to try giving the ors again we cannot give ors immediately because the child is vomiting and it, it and the child will again vomit so you have to uh, wait for about 10 minutes we also have to give the oral rehydration solution very slowly so a teaspoon every two to three minutes if we give the ORS slowly maybe the child will be able to take it if the child wants to drink more ORS solution than estimated amount so uh, maybe we have given the amount that is required for the child based on this table or even by this formula and even after that the child is willing to take more and the child is not vomiting then there is no harm to continue giving more ORS to the child if the child refuses to drink and we see that there is no sign of dehydration then we can stop the ORS therapy if the child is breastfed that means it is on breast milk then breastfeeding should be continued along with ORS so it is not that ORS is to be given and breastfeeding should be stopped breastfeeding has to be continued what are the signs of adequate rehydration so when we know that rehydration can be stopped there is no need of giving ORS anymore skin pinch goes back immediately when released so this is the ideal situation when there is no dehydration skin pinch should go back immediately if there is some dehydration it does not go back immediately but it goes back within two seconds if it takes more than two seconds then it is known as severe dehydration thirst subsided so there is no thirst and the pulse is strong and the child is passing urine so if all these signs are present we know that there is adequate rehydration and ORS can be stopped so with this we conclude today's session on zinc and ORS in episodes of diarrhea we know why zinc is important and how much zinc is to be given also what is the importance of ORS what are the different formulation why low, low osmolar ORS is preferred uh, how much ORS is to be given, how it is given, how it is prepared and when the oral rehydration therapy is to be stopped. If you like our video, please subscribe to our channel and share this video with your batchmates, juniors and friends. We also have our Facebook page that you can follow. The link is given in the description. Thank you and we shall see you in our next video.